All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us on another edition here of our Moving Beyond the Coronavirus Economy series. My name is Tom Dufour, and I'm excited to uh, have our guest today with us who is going to be talking about some really cool franchise related programs. So uh, if you're not familiar with a program that ADP has in place, uh, Janae Netwig is our guest and she's gonna be talking about some really neat programs that are available to you as a franchisor or maybe as a budding on, uh, franchisor um, and share some of the really neat things that she has in place. I've had the great opportunity to have met Janae um, in the past and we've had, we've had many conversations and and talking about the program and how it can really benefit uh, franchisors of all shapes and sizes. And so with that, Janae, I'd love to turn things over to you uh, to, to get us started today. Thanks, Tom. And I'm super pumped to be here today with you guys. Um, as Tom had mentioned, you know, today's presentation is really all about, you know, a high level overview on what you guys would be facing if you're a franchisee, a franchisor, trying to grow your network nationwide, maybe even globally down the road. And then maybe you're a partner or somebody that has advisory skills in this industry and you're looking to find solutions that are gonna help your clients be more streamlined, more efficient, and of course, stay out of trouble. And so um, as Tom mentioned, you know, I shared with him some of my background and I'm super pumped to share some items today that I think will really be impactful to help you guys um, reach success. So I'm going to share my screen and hop into a little presentation that I have here for you. Um, can you guys see that okay? Yes. All right. We're good? Yes. Technology is with us today? It, All right. It awesome. Is. So today's presentation is Solutions for Franchise Success. Who doesn't want that, right? So I'm going to get right into the agenda. Um, and like I said, I think every single person on this call is going to get something from today. So um, as Tom mentioned, I'm Janine Nentwig. I'm a National Franchise Director with ADP. And I've had over 13 experience, uh, years of experience um, in this space helping franchisors, franchisees, working with uh, franchise attorneys, consultants, brokers. So I know this space very well, and I've had the pleasure of working with some familiar names that you might see in the top 100 list or even some emerging brands. As you can see on my resume, I've worked directly with Orange Theory, Puro Clean, European Wax Center, The Learning Experience, iHeart Mac and Cheese, Techie, and many more. And my role is really to be a dedicated point of contact for franchisors to help franchisees grow in a healthy way, um, grow their network in a healthy way, and avoid unnecessary setbacks in the area of HR, talent management, benefits, and administration. So today's agenda is really going to be focused around a couple of different things. So we're going to start with just high-level employer responsibilities. And then we're going to dive into key factors concerning business owners today. And then we're going to touch on some awareness items and solutions and strategy on how to avoid unnecessary setbacks in all of these areas. And then I'm gonna throw it to you guys for some questions. Sound good? Awesome. So first thing I wanted to touch on is some non-revenue generating items that new employers have to take care of. So when I get in front of franchise training, um, for different brands and it's new business owners. A lot of them are just super pumped to get out there and make some money, grow their business and reach success. A lot of them don't realize that what comes with the territory is becoming an HR expert, managing people, and of course, um, running payroll. And it is one of the biggest expenses, if not the biggest of the business. So it's really important that you're buttoned up in this area. So number one, you gotta make sure that you have electronic registrations completed in your state. Every state's a little bit different, but that's one of the number one things you got to take care of right out of the gates. Payroll tax liability. What kind of systems do you have in place when it comes to calculating and filing and depositing payroll taxes correctly? Now, ADP, for those of you who don't know, ADP is the leader in the industry when it comes to payroll and tax compliance. We're the number one tax depositor in the nation. Um, so if you're not aligned with someone like ADP, hopefully you're aligned with a partner that is 
um, not a fly by night company and um, has credibility in this space because it's a huge liability if you're not doing this properly. Hiring and onboarding. Are you posting accurate job descriptions? Are you um, performing background checks? These are all things that you need to make sure that you have buttoned up when you're onboarding new employees. New hire reporting. Um, a lot of people don't realize this, but you have to report to the state every time you hire a new employee for the business. And some of you may be thinking, okay, I've had other businesses and I don't think I report to the state. Well, usually that item doesn't come up until you have one of those fun audits. Um, where they just stop in and need to gather information. They're like, oh, wow, you've hired eight people and we don't see that you've actually reported to the state. And this is where little penalties arise that we just didn't know about. So it's really important you have a partnership that helps you and guides you in these areas. And if you don't have a partner, that you're taking care of it yourself. Affordable Care Act. You might have heard this as an acronym ACA, right? Um, health insurance. If you don't have over 50 full-time equivalents or FTEs, then you're really not gonna have to worry about offering a health insurance plan at this time. But if you aren't offering health insurance as a small business owner, you need to be letting them know with a specific document that this organization is not offering health insurance at this time and they acknowledge it. A lot of people don't realize that. Time and attendance tracking. That is an area where a lot of our clients see profit leaks. If you don't have a POS system that's integrated with your payroll or a time tracking system via mobile app, it's so flexible today, guys, where you can just literally log into your phone and have them clock in and clock out, and it can track them where they were when they clocked in and out. So they can't be in bed. Um, you can have a geofence. So um, having this in place is huge to make sure that you're not losing money here and there, 20 minutes here, 20 minutes there. It adds up, folks. Payroll processing, pretty straightforward stuff and we'll get into it. Tracking and storing HR information. You know, today we can do a lot of things with our data cloud. You don't have to have these paper files that are just kind of in an office space where they can get lost or really private information can be exposed to the wrong people. So how are you going to handle this piece? That information needs to be accessible when you're in an audit situation. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Compliance responsibilities. Every state's a little bit different, and I'm going to show you a couple of visuals on what I'm talking about, but you need to be abreast of the rules that you have in your state jurisdiction, whether it's local, municipal, um, state regulated. It's really important, and everyone's a little bit different. Unemployment claims, last thing on this slide, if you take anything from this slide, I think it's the number one thing that you need to focus on. Unemployment claims. It is the only controllable tax that you have, unemployment tax. So a lot of new business owners as franchise owners don't realize, for example, in the state of Florida, you start off at 2.7%, you can go as low as 0.1%, but you can also go as high as 5.4%, which is where all of us don't wanna be. So how do you manage that well? Well, when you have turnover, inevitably you're gonna get these unemployment claims. And as a new business owner, turnover is gonna happen. You're gonna have people that stick and you're gonna have people that just unfortunately don't work out. So those claims come to your desk and what happens? You're a busy business owner. You have a bajillion things on your plate. That thing starts collecting dust. And before you know it, that person's been awarded unemployment. It doesn't impact your pocket today, but it does tomorrow because now your experience rate has gone from 2.7 and going up and up and up and eventually to 5.4%. That is an example in the state of Florida. Every state's a little bit different. But if you partner with a company like ADP, and we'll get into how these solutions can really help support you in these areas, we can work as your second administrator where we can take on that burden. And you can actually have us handle the unemployment claims, send the claim over to us, we handle it, and then your experience rate will start to go down where you have a good experience and we can start saving you in this area in terms of dollars. So. Hopefully this slide was helpful. I love this slide because I think it really encompasses everything that you need to know to get started. Joint employer law. If you're not familiar with it, get familiar with it. As franchisors, I think you pretty much do know about this. If you're a labor law attorney or a franchise attorney, you know about this stuff. What franchisees don't realize is, yes, you're coming on board and there's a lot of resources that your franchisors can provide you to make sure you're successful. But one area they cannot advise you in is in the area of HR due to joint employer law. We can connect on this individually after this call, but just to keep it simple, things like an employee handbook, 
A franchisor cannot provide you an employee handbook. It's just a liability. Um, HR guidance, they cannot provide you guidance in certain situations that are happening in your business. You have to have your own sounding board to get those things resolved. In the area of employee management, they cannot tell you how to discipline or handle certain employee situations. So it's really important that you have a partnership that gives you that kind of sounding board or at least the tools and resources to know how to handle these things. Moving on. So I love this slide because visually it shows us where we are today. So if you're a new startup and you're trying to reach success, um, there are basically three things, three key factors that concern business owners today. One being cash flow. I think all of us would agree. Um, it's on top of, I think, 80% of business owners' minds. 48% um, of business owners that we work with say cash flow is their number one concern. Okay. Um, people management. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but how are we managing our talent? Right. They're the ones that help our business function and they represent our brand. So what are we doing to manage that well? And then risk management, compliance. How are we mitigating risk? Um, on the top left-hand corner, you'll see a couple of statistics. 68% of owners spent time on administrative tasks when they could be doing revenue generating things. 70% of business owners say that small businesses, oh, oh that HR, this is a sherm fact here. 70% of small business owners are out of compliance. Think about that. One audit, all it takes is your I-9s being out of compliance, and those are penalties that you just did not anticipate. 20% um, of our best employees that work for us are actually evaluating to leave to go to another company. So what are we doing to win that war on talent, retain and attract good talent? So the best way to do that is to have great cash management tools, employee benefits, a sounding board for compliance, and great technology that's innovative and has integration. So before we get into the cash flow piece, these are some of the current trends that are impacting your business today. No surprise here, record level inflation. Um, that's not a surprise. Uh, consumer confidence. In the past two years, the, the economy has demonstrated that it's driving demand side and the supply chain challenge, challenges are very real. Some of the labor challenges, talent, 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 talent. I would say that this is the number one conversation I have with franchisors and franchisees is how can they win when it comes to talent acquisition? And we'll talk a little bit more about that. And then returning to work. Everyone had pretty much a virtual environment for a really long time and they got used to that. So how do you get people to come back into the workplace? Um, these are all areas that we are helping our clients in the franchise space every single day. So when it comes to cash flow, look, there are a ton of little things that you can do to tweak to make cash flow be less of a stressor for you. So having a POS system that tracks um, not only sales revenues, but also the timekeeping piece of it. You can have that integrate with your payroll system and everything is just integrated and seamless. So you want to eliminate human error. Um, this causes unnecessary setbacks when it comes to cash flow, when you have mistakes on payroll, when you have information that didn't transfer over correctly. Um, even with your back engine for um, your general ledger, QuickBooks integration, ADP system integrates with every type of um, back office software when it comes to QuickBooks. So once you run your payroll, that information automatically gets keyed in. You don't have to double enter. We're eliminating the human error that can possibly happen or at least reducing it. Um, benefits integration. So when you have a benefits provider, who's administering that? Is it a separate provider or do you have that integrated with your payroll system? These are all things that can help you from a cash flow perspective because nothing's waiting in the wings to be paid. Everything flows automatically. Um, pay as you go workers compensation. That is another area that'll really help a lot of you on this call. So when you have a broker outside um, workers comp provider, what they do is they ask you, hey, what do you think your annual set or payroll is gonna be for the year? And you're just about to open your doors and you're like, you know what, I have no idea. So from there, they just say, well, let's just get a guesstimate. Then before you know it, you're paying your premiums all year long and at the end of the year, what happens? You get whacked with this lovely audit that yields you paying out 10 grand that you didn't expect. But when you have a system like pay as you go workers' compensation that's integrated with your payroll system, you can't pay too much, 
and you can't pay too little. So at the end of the year, it really takes the pressure off when it comes to those audits and they're not fun. Um, so knowing that you won't have that expense at the end of the year that is you don't even know what it's going to be is just great because everything is up to date um, and it's sound. There's other pieces that you can do too, where you can basically have mobile solutions so you can run and process things from anywhere. And that should be the kind of partnership that you have, flexible and giving you different options to get things done. All right, people management, talent. So I think all of you would agree that talent is our biggest asset, but it's also our biggest risk, right? These people are representing our brand. So what are we doing to make sure that we're hiring the right people and that we're all on the same page when it comes to the standards that we have at our workplace? So one thing you can do is, first of all, you want to have a great applicant tracking system to find good people, right? Um, there's a lot of great systems out there. And one thing we're going to get into is, yes, ADP does have solutions where we bake in ZipRecruiter. Um, but we also integrate with things like CareerPlug. And that's a very common tool that's used by a lot of franchisees and franchisors nationwide um, to reach multiple job boards. And then have that information completely integrated to your payroll system just makes your life a lot easier. Um, but then from there, what are you doing? Are you um, running background checks? Do you have an employee handbook in place? We're going to touch on that. That is a big one. Um, but the hiring process needs to be streamlined because that is the first impression that you're giving your employees that are about to join your workplace. Are you a professional organization that's buttoned up? and has streamlined processes with like electronic onboarding. Instead of giving them a packet of paper this thick, maybe you can send them a nice link that basically says that they, you require them to upload um, their ID, provide the direct deposit information, fill out your W-4 and I-9, and oh, we actually require this training before you even come to work. And by the way, this is gonna be your team when you come on board. It's just a nice streamlined process. And I bet you they're gonna think wow, I'm super excited to get started and I'm proud to be working for this organization. That's the first impression. Finding and attracting good talent, um, aside from the dollar an hour, benefits are huge when winning the war on talent. So some of you on this call might be new franchise owners or maybe thinking to franchise. Health insurance might be just a daunting thing to even think about, but a lot of you don't realize out there that retirement is actually a very highly sought after benefit. Three out of four business owners that actually work with ADP say that having a retirement plan in place has definitely helped with uh, attracting and retaining good talent. So the only reason why you wouldn't have that plan in place is either because of the cost or the administration. If you have a partner that streamlines the administration for you and doesn't add any extra steps to your plate, that eliminates that issue. And then we're gonna get into some of the tax credits that you can tap into to offset the cost when it comes to this benefit. So that eliminates that. So having a retirement plan in place can really help you from an overall compensation package um, perspective to win or uh, just have that talent acquisition be more successful. Employee access is um, something I wanna to touch on really quick. That is where you can give your employees access online to their own portal. So giving them access to their check stubs, being able to make changes like to their direct deposit. If you add benefits all in the single sign-on, giving them access to retirement and how their retirement's growing and also their health insurance just really streamlines the relationship and obviously is professional. All right. So benchmarking is a huge area that I feel like comes up a ton with my franchisors and my franchisees. Um, ADP bakes into their system benchmarking data. And this is huge because it enables you access to organizations' performance against thousands of small to mid-sized businesses across the US. Um, it allows you to identify and respond to trends in the economy and your sector and your geographic location. I can't tell you how many times I've had conversations with business owners where they're like, hey, I'm about to hire a regional manager or a marketing person. What should I pay them? And so I'm like, well, it's different every state, the average, and what are they gonna be doing? So look, you have a tool here where you can just simply go to your area, type in the kind of position you're looking for, and it will give you the range of 
where you should be and what the industry average should be, um, compensation, it's awesome. People spend thousands just to get this done. Um, so having it baked into your payroll partnership is amazing. And it's something that a lot of our clients really value with our partnership. Mitigating risk. So we kind of talked about it a little bit, little things that you can do to mitigate risk with your employees or just compliance in general. Number one, you should be running background checks on all of your people. Um, whether they're a candidate that you're thinking to hire for or not, it's huge. ADP bakes background checks into our system, um, but you can always use an outside service as well. But these people represent your brand, whether they're in people's homes or collecting money for certain transactions. It's really important to know who you're working with. I came from recruiting before I worked at ADP, and it would amaze me every time when I would let the person know across from me that I'm going to be running a background check. They checked all the boxes. They, they had the resume that I was looking for, the personality. I run the background check, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, um, this is not going to work out. And sometimes just by letting them know that you're gonna run a background check, they'll start talking about a bunch of different things and just kind of letting you know up front. So it's just good to do, it's a good practice. You should also have an HR sounding board. So when you're onboarding new employees or terminating employees that don't work out, it's important to have somebody to reach out to and make sure that you're handling things properly, whether they're it's documenting or actions being taken. So. For example, in the state of California, you need to provide your employee on the spot whatever leftover compensation they have before you terminate them. So you would have to give it to them as you terminate them. You can't wait until the pay period ends. That would be a risk and liability for the company because it's against the law in the state of California. So just little things like that um, when it comes to COVID-related items. Some of you might think, okay, I have an employee that just got COVID for two weeks, they're out. They're telling me I still need to pay them. Is that in fact true? You can call your HR help desk with ADP, or if you have an outside um, support system, that's great too. But you need to have somebody that can help guide you to make sure that you're not going to fall into an unnecessary setback here just because of something silly. The employee handbook. I cannot harp on this enough. I believe it's the next slide. Yes, it is. This is the number one subpoenaed item in an employment lawsuit, okay? The only reason why an employer would not have an employee handbook in place is because it's costly and it takes a lot of time and a lot of us on this call are not attorneys. So we don't know what we're doing when we're putting these policies together. So when you have a provider that has these tools baked into their system, it just makes life a lot easier with ADP. We provide you over 350 legally reviewed policies that are already baked into um, our system. So you can just simply drag electronically what you would like. You can customize it. You can brand it. And then as you're onboarding those employees electronically, you can make that part of the onboarding process for them to, quote, read and acknowledge the terms in your employee handbook. Um, and you can actually track the acknowledgments. One question I get is, what if I want to change some policies that I have in there six months down the road. You absolutely can, and you can send the addendum out to be acknowledged as well. This eliminates you having to go to a labor law attorney, spending thousands of dollars to have it reviewed, um, but also it um, gives you the streamlined process electronically to make sure that it's acknowledged. And it's not just like a big fat book in the corner that's collecting dust and not being utilized. This will protect you as a business owner and if you don't have one in place, consider yourself lost. Um, if something happens where you do get sued, it's just a great way to protect yourself. And I can't harp on this enough. All right, so ever-changing employer requirements across the states. So I use this diagram to show just the example of the different rules and regulations they have statewide for just paid and sick leave laws. So there are required paid sick leave laws in the state of New York, Pennsylvania, Oregon, Washington, and some states don't have any at all. Some owners have no clue that this is required. ADP already knows this as we're setting you up. So we will notify you that, hey, are you aware that you need to be offering X amount of time in paid sick leave? And it's just a law. There's certain requirements for each state and we would get into it individually. But I like this diagram because it just goes to show you that this is how it looks right now, and it's changing every single day. 
There's also now retirement mandates by state. So a lot of people that I talk to, I'll get in front of franchise trainings and they won't even realize that, wow, in the state of California, they have just recently passed their cutoff deadline for their legislation for retirement. That means that in that state, if you have over five employees, um, you have to offer a retirement plan. There are options, but you need to offer some kind of retirement plan. And every state that has passed this legislation is a tad different on the requirements. ADP has retirement um, offerings. We are actually, a lot of people don't realize this, we are one of the largest retirement providers in the nation. Um, so it's just nice when we run into this that we can just pivot immediately to having this set up and integrated. Aside from having a state mandate though, I just wanna point out that a lot of business owners will say, oh, well, I'm in the state of Florida, so I don't have to offer a retirement plan. So thank goodness. Whew. But that means, you know, you have not only colleagues that are offering this, so that, that improves their overall compensation package for their employees, but you probably have competitors down the street that are offering it as well. So um, something that I always bring up that, you know, just because you're not mandated, it's something you should strongly consider because of those tax credits. And I believe that would be the next tax slide. All right. So Secure Act. So I mentioned it earlier with retirement, one of the key reasons why you wouldn't have it in place is the um, cost, right? So if you have a tax credit that can subsidize costs on a 401k, why aren't we doing it, folks? It just makes absolutely no sense. Secure Act came out in 2020, can get you up to $5,500 for three consecutive years in tax credits to offset costs because you're now offering a retirement plan. Um, it's incredible. Before this time, it was like a $500 tax break. Um, not anything to make people run to uh, start a retirement plan, but $5,500 is amazing. Um, you get up to that. There's a requirement or like a criteria on how that works. But ADP, when we're doing your 401k, we automatically prepare the 8881 form for you so that when your um, CPA files your business taxes, you can get that credit. Other areas where you can receive tax credits, a lot of people are tapping into the um, ERTC credits. ADP also does perform those for our clients. Um, work opportunity tax credits, depending on how many new hires you have, this is an area where you can really get a lot of money back if you're hiring veterans. Um, There's so many different categories, but up to $9,600 per veteran, and that's incredible, or per new hire, depending on the category. So. Research and development credits, we handle that too. R&D is huge. Um, economic, economic development services. There's so many different areas that are not being tapped into by um, franchisors and franchisees. And we will make you aware of that as ADP clients. But if you're not with ADP, you should definitely be asking your CPA about how you can take advantage in these areas. Lastly, we need to talk about integration. So in the beginning, I had mentioned that having integrations really will streamline the administrative process for you and also help you from a cash flow perspective. ADP has the largest marketplace integrations with outside partners than any other provider in the nation. And this really helps a lot of franchisees and franchisors with their franchisees when you can simply download from your POS into the payroll system download from the ATS system, career plug, or whatever position or um, provider you're using. There's a ton that we work with, and it would be great whether using ADP or not to have a provider that can have that capability, again, just to avoid human error. So when it comes to vendor relationships, I think there's really three key measurements that you need to look at. Um, are they a credible partner? You know, with ADP, we're the leader in HR and payroll, and we have a bajillion statistics that I can rattle off right now about our technology, our security, and just how we play in the marketplace. Um, we have financial stability. We've been around for over 80 years, um, and we have preferred programs for franchises. So what kind of benefits are we bringing to the table specific for our partnership when it comes to franchise? We have those programs. Um, we're also here to protect. So when it comes to HR, employee solutions, managing people, minimizing risk, managing cash flow, um, having a service that not only you have a point of contact, but then also if that point of contact is unavailable, that you have 24-7, 365 
service is really important in this area. We're talking about people's payroll, paychecks, um, HR issues. It's really important to have a sounding board. And then growth. Do you have a partner or a vendor that's really going to help grow your business to be successful? Streamlining operations, scalable solutions. So we're not trying to just force you in one bucket. Maybe you need something different than the other franchisee, or maybe you as a franchisor have grown beyond 50 employees or 100 employees. What kind of scalability does your partner have? And what kind of proactive support do they have as well? Are they bringing things to the forefront, like letting you know that your state is mandating retirement, that, hey, we need to kind of make sure that you're doing sexual harassment training because you're in the state of California and they require it. These are all the things that you need in a partnership to be um, to have a successful relationship. So with ADP, I think I covered this pretty drastically in the um, my box, but we consolidate systems. We are not just a payroll company. I think that what people don't realize is that that's only 23% of what we do. We have workers' compensation. We have mobile application, HR services, retirement, tax credits, outsourcing options, and time and attendance and talent management um, resources, and also health benefits. Everything is baked into ADP all one company, we're not outsourcing this to a third party. And we also play well with other vendors where they can integrate their systems with ours. We're not trying to be the expert in every single area. And so we just want to partner up with them and make sure that that information is streamlined properly for you guys. So just in conclusion about what the partnership looks like when you are a partner with ADP, you get exclusive rates on all ADP solutions. You get a tenured quarterback, me, um, as a franchise director. Um, so I would be the point of contact for not only the franchisor, but also the franchisees. Um, you get enhanced back office support, implementation teams that know your brand and are um, expeditiously working with me direct versus maybe one out of however many that I could get on the line. There is only a certain amount of people that I work with that would know um, specifically the nuances that your brand would need. Bridging the gap for joint employer law. The reason why a lot of franchisors work with ADP in a franchise partnership is we bridge that gap. We are able to provide their franchisees with employee handbooks or the ability to create one. We give them HR support and guidance, and we also give them tools and resources to help manage their employees in the right way. And it's a one-stop shop. We're not looking to just provide payroll and then bring in all these third-party vendors. So you have all these different websites every day that you're working with, just one spot. And then, like I said, we're the largest marketplace provider for integrations like POS, ATS, et cetera. So with that being said, I know we covered a lot, but I am happy to answer any questions that you might have. Great. Thank you, Janae. That was excellent. And uh, definitely would love to open this up to our attendees. Uh, anyone who's on, feel free to type it into the chat box, Q&A, or just raise your hand, um, and I can unmute you as part of the presentation. Um, while we're waiting, uh, Janae, one question that came up while I was watching the presentation or, and really a comment that you had made about offering, for example, I think it was talking about retirement, 401k options or something that you're, even though your state may or not require it, um, you still may want to offer it as a differentiator at your local level. And I was thinking from a franchise, from a franchisor perspective, uh, being in conjunction or working in conjunction with ADP and what you can do, even at your company-owned locations, let's say in Florida, you decide you don't want to offer that, but having that available to franchisees in other states as you open, I think is a benefit that it is available for each franchisee to be able to make that uh, a, a decision as well. So I just, I, I guess I thought I, I, that'd be worthwhile mentioning. Yeah, absolutely. I think one great thing is that we can layer, right? So if we want to start here and we just want to get people paid, we want to have streamlined administration, that's great. Um, but having that ability to scale and add benefits and make sure that adding those things aren't going to add steps to your plate is really important. Again, whether you're using ADP or not, that's what you got to think about is how can I streamline this the best way possible? And if you have um, that state mandate, obviously you got to do something, but if you're doing it with the state, that is a separate vendor and you as an administrator are fully responsible. When you integrate with a company like ADP, you have co-fiduciary um, resources with us. So we take on the liability and we also integrate everything direct. So when you go to run that payroll, 
contributions go out automatically. You don't have to remember, oh shoot, I hired Susie Smith three months ago and I have a three month eligibility. So I better let them know they're now eligible because those are the things that if you don't do that, you run into an issue. Hmm. Thank you. Yeah, great point. Uh, questions, comments for Janae while she's here with us. Not seeing anything come through so far. Um, so Janelle, Janae, this has been excellent. What's the best way for someone to connect with you, get in touch, um, and maybe schedule for that one-on-one -on -one if they want to talk specifically about their business needs? Yeah. So right here, I think, I don't know if you can see my presentation, I can put it back up again. Um, yep. let me see here. Can you guys see my screen? Can you see this? Okay. Uh, yes, we can. All right. So um, again, Janae Nantwig and my cell phone is listed here. So that's always a great way to get in touch with me. You can call me, you can text me. And then of course my email listed there as well. Um, so either way, those are the best ways to get in touch with me. You can also reach out to Tom if, you know, for some reason you're not able to jot, jot this down, but um, happy to connect via sounding board. Um, if you're already with ADP, I can, um, you know, be a sounding board for you as well. If you're not, same thing, but I do look forward to connecting with each of you and helping you in any way I can. Great. Well, Janae, this has been wonderful. And for those of you that are new to our webinar educational series, uh, we do make this recording available. It should be live next week uh, for you to view again or share with others who maybe didn't have a chance to see this. So Janae, thanks so much for being here. Thank you all to our uh, attendees for being a part of this. And I hope you all have a great weekend and a happy Thanksgiving. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me.